Thank you very much. I'd like to call to order the meeting of HUDs for September 29th, 2022. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Cohn. Alderman Kotar. Alderman Boyd. Aye. Alderman Narayan. Here. Alderwoman Evans. Chair Davis. Present. That's not a quorum. No, that's not a quorum. I don't have a quorum. <laughs> So I know that uh, Alderman, oh. Alderman Cohn I, has to be excused. Okay. I did send him a link. He didn't receive a link this morning. Um, so I did forward him a link. Okay. Let me... Well, I hadn't received one either. So okay. until just uh, a moment ago. Uh, there's a... Uh... So who can we call that needs to be on this? Just one moment, I'm gonna call Alderwoman um, Evans. Hold on one moment. And it looks like uh, the Alderman Coder just joined Sorry us. Sorry about that, everybody. Okay. okay. So we have the quorum now. We have a quorum for present. One, two, three. Thank you very much, Alderman. Uh, <clears throat> I'd like to ask uh, for approval of the minutes for September 22nd, 2022. I move, I move that we approve the minutes for September 22nd, 2022. Second. It's been moved and second. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Alderman Cohn. Alderman Kotar. Aye. Alderman Boyd. Aye. Alderman Narayan. Aye. Alderman Evans. Chair Davis. Aye. Four present. Thank you. Uh, Alderman uh, Sharon Tice asked for her bill to be held. Could you please make note of that, Madam Clerk? So noted. Okay, and I don't have a, an agenda. Um, I do have it, you may emailed it to me just now, but uh, I'm gonna ask you to carry the agenda. So the next item on the agenda is. For bill number 89, introduced by Alderwoman Marlene Davis, an ordinance recommended by the Board of Estimate and Apportionment authorizing and directing the insurance and delivery of not to exceed Four billion six hundred ninety-one million plus insurance costs, principal amount of tax increment, and special district review, revenue notes. Uh, Armory District RPA one series twenty dash A slash B of the City of St. Louis, Missouri, prescribing the form and details of such notes and the covenants and agreements made by the city to facilitate and protect the payment thereof, prescribing other matters relating thereto and contain a severability clause. Okay, I thank you very much for that. Uh, <clears throat> board Bill 89 uh, is a Armory District Board Bill. It is, um, it is one that has had a lot of attention. And what I would like to do is, as a sponsor, I normally don't uh, talk a lot about a bill until the end because all the persons do not negotiate development deals. What they do is they assist their community, they assist if questions are asked of them, but it is the job of the St. Louis Development Corporation to vet projects, to do the financial analysis on behalf of the city of St. Louis, and also look at how this city can benefit from that development in the future. And also look at all of the things that it may or may not affect in a positive or negative way. So in saying that, 
What I'd like to do is to turn this over to our, our guest speakers that I see listed here from the Development Corporation. Uh, we'll start off there. We also have guest speakers from uh, the developer side of this project, and I will entertain them. Probably they'll be intertwined as the St. Louis Development staff uh, explains this bill to us and give us all of uh, the answers that we may ask of them. And so um, is Director Richardson with us yet? I am. Alderman Davis. All right, sir. I shall turn it over to you. Thank you again. We really appreciate the opportunity uh, to bring this forward and have be part of this conversation. Uh, we have been working with Green Street uh, really over the last year since I've <laughs> taken on this role um, to not only negotiate the financial means within the TIF, but also have conversations with Green Street around how they can be supportive as developers in advancing equitable economic growth, economic justice forward in the city. And we believe that um, Green Street has shown good faith in doing that. Um, they are working with us on establishing our economic justice fund to invest in other areas outside of just the central corridor and downtown around how they can create economic, greater economic outcomes for North City specifically, but also driving investment um, in partnership with the St. Louis Public Schools. The goal that we have at SLDC is not to look at each one of these transactions in isolation, but to coordinate um, across the city, as you stated, um, Alderwoman, to make sure that our entire city benefits from these projects long-term. And so as we are having conversations with Green Street, <laughs> we are also bringing uh, St. Louis Public Schools to the table around how we can ensure that all taxing districts benefit from the growth of these development projects. Again, we're not looking at any one transaction in isolation, but having more broader and strategic conversations around how our development partners, how our businesses can be greater stewards to our growth as a city at large. So again, that will be part of the ongoing process at SLDC to ensure that we're doing developer vetting, not looking at one transaction that they're presenting um, for public incentive or public benefit, but looking at their track record, how have they invested historically in the city and what are their goals to help us move this city forward? Because again, we wanna have transformational partnerships and not just look at it on a one transaction basis. Uh, so I'll pass it over to Zach Wilson, um, our Vice President of Economic Development Incentives, who will give an overview of the TIF um, bill that's pre presented today, and then pass it over to Green Street uh, for more specifics on the, the direct project itself. Thank you, Neil. Uh as you know, usually on TIF bills, um, TIF projects, we have three bills that usually come forward, the Board of Aldermen. Two of those bills were already approved back in 2017. So this, uh, these two bills are before you, one's 89, and I believe the other one's 90. 89 is basically amending portions of the one bill, uh, I believe the agreement, um, and the second bill is for the TIF notes on themselves. So I just want to get a little history there before we pass on to Green Street. Thank you. Green Street team, can you please move forward? Thank you. Sure, uh, I'll, I'll start and then I'll, I'll hand it off to, to the folks that really know what's going on. My name is Dave Sweeney, I'm Lewis Trice and um, representing part of the team representing Green Street. Yeah, um, as far as board bill 89 goes, as Zach already stated, you know, this this was initiated back and in, in passed back in 2017 and board bill 89 just issues the bonds um, and, and, and the uh, the amount, the TIF note, excuse me, um, to not exceed four point six nine uh, million. Um, a couple of key facts I just want to stress are these notes are not general obligations bonds to the city. So the city is not on the hook for this whatsoever. Um, the notes are payable only from available revenues as defined in the bill. 
um, which include tip pilots, tip eats, and the SID revenues. So again, this is the third, typically in, in tips in the past, we've seen it go in three bills. Um, that wasn't the case here. Um, it was the first two that were, and this one wasn't done in 2017. And this is just bringing that up to speed. And then I can go, we'll discuss, 90 has a few more details, so I'm, we're happy to discuss as well. Thanks. Anything you want to add, James, Green Street team? Thanks, David. This is uh, James out there from Green Street. Uh, we just wanted to underscore the point that, you know, the TIF is already in place, um, high level overview for the project. The, uh, this is an entertainment destination uh, being the armory. It's anticipated to create hundreds of jobs over the next year. And it's, you know, it's part of a larger district. So it's not just an isolated project. It's really designed to help revitalize this area. Did we have any other members of Green Street that needed to present? We do not, Alderman, thank you. Okay. Uh, I want to go back to uh, Director Richardson, please. <clears throat> yeah, so the, the last um, statement that I would like to make um, before we move, move forward is, I know there's been conversations um, about why isn't you know the public benefit within the 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 TIF bill the legislation itself, and per um, TIF state statute, there is no um, legal ground for us to favor one taxing district over another, and so that is we don't have any legal grounds to actually put that language within the board bill. However. SLDC will continue to vet developers to ensure that they are providing equitable growth. They are investing. They are being great partners in community. Um, again, not in isolation of one deal, but across all of their transactions within the city of St. Louis. So I just wanted to state that as a legal point of context that a state statute does not allow for uh, TIF to uh, benefit one taxing district over another. Um, so we're having global conversations again with partners to ensure that they're not investing um, inequitably and they are actually working for the city overall to be good partners in advancing us forward. Cause that's the goal of the city of St. Louis in this moment. So I'll pass it back over to you. Uh, Sean and Davis. Thank you very much. Uh, as has been stated, this is a, a project that has been working for a number of years. And uh, this is just another phase of it that was postponed and we wanna get it back on track. Uh, this project is located in the 17th and the 19th ward. Uh, and we have been, um, We've been very fortunate to have a project like this. And what I want to add, uh, for those who don't know, there's a lot of infrastructure development that comes with this project. And the city doesn't have money to do it. And that's another way that the city benefits from these projects, that we can get this work done. Uh, it's, it's, it's deferred maintenance because we've never had the money to get it done. It's also bringing new traffic patterns that are safer, more attractive. All of that comes with this development by the end of it. So as we're looking at this, know that it's more than just about the apartments or about the businesses or about the recreation uh, centers that are going to be there. It's about a lot more that benefits this city. So you have to look at these projects in their totality. And again, all the persons are not urban development planners. That is not our role. We need to stay in our lane. We are legislators. And we have a department, we have two departments that provide us with assistance for the expenditure of funds. 
One is the St. Louis Development Corporation, and the other one is the Community Development Agency. Both of them spend our money. They vet the projects. We do not, we do not sit down as all the persons. It is not our role to determine who gets a contract. We don't actually create the contracts. We don't sign off on a contract. That is not our role. We don't create leases. We don't make payments. And we go over now to the comptroller's office who takes care of our funding for us, who has com compliance. All of that is not, none of that is the role of an alder person. The alder person is the legislator for the people and should be working with the people in the community, helping your community residents and business owners to be more educated, to know the resources that are available to assist them in doing what they are doing and wanting. That's the most important thing. So as we know, uh, we do have concern here, but the St. Louis Development Corporation makes those decisions for us and we, we should respect that. Now we do have um, one more speaker. Uh, Mr. Connolly, are you ready? Mr. Connolly? Uh, do anybody see him? Let me see. He's on there, Madam Chair. He's on mute. Jerry Connolly. Uh, yeah, I'm not available to speak right now. Um, is it possible to come back a bit later after the many members have asked questions? After what, sir? After the members of the committee and any other older people have commented, is it possible to speak then? Well, one of the things that we try to do is we try to keep the scheduled together on our agenda. Uh, and so I wanted to, uh, uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll honor you on that today, okay? So okay. we'll come back after I go through committee. Thank you. Okay, I appreciate it, thank you. All right, so let me start with uh, committee members, please. Uh, we'll start with uh, Alderman Cohn. Oh, I'm sorry, he's not here. Alderman Coder. Sorry, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, and I, I'm sorry if I missed this. I had to change locations briefly, but is there is there some sort of financial analysis we're getting on this, or are we doing that for this project? I mean, I'm I'm generally familiar with what's being planned, um, but was wondering if there's you know a model we're looking at or a capital stack or anything. The the model and the plan um, capital stack was approved back in 2017. Um, so this was basically just approving the tip note section and amending the redevelopment agreement. So understood. Okay. Thanks, Zach. That's help this helps clarify. Right. Okay. Nothing further, Madam Chair. All right, sir. Alderwoman Boyd. I don't have any questions. I'm just I'm not trying to be clear in my head. This is something because we had another project like this. This was something from 2017 and we're just renewing what was already there, correct? That is, is an amendment uh, to allow this to move forward. Remember, uh, as the director Richardson stated, this was all approved in 2017, mm -hmm. but it got delayed. Mm -hmm. and, and he had an opportunity to review the entire project and uh, have added some suggestions. Green Street has agreed to some new additional things for community benefit, and, and that's a good thing. So um, that you're right, it's already been approved. So there's, uh, it's just amending this and, and moving it forward. Yeah, and that just that just allowed us to strengthen this to make it better. So yes, that's all I want to clarity. I, I have no problem with it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Alderman Duran. 
Uh, thank you, Chairman Chairwoman Davis. Um, just a couple of questions. I'm just trying to wrap my head around this. If uh, someone from SLDC could kind of point out some of the changes to this project over the last several years now, I know it's a very different beast than what we started with. Um, and I was looking back, but going back to several years before I was on the board, I'm just trying to understand uh, how how this project has changed over the last uh, four, four and a half years now. I would say mostly the, there was a more of a mixed use uh, component to this. They had called for some office space before, but as you know, um, with COVID and other types of things, the office market has tanked. Uh, so developers have to adapt. And um, I would maybe pull in Green Street to go in more detail of what they're seeing right now, but this is more of a, there was always calls of some type of restaurant component or a microbrewery or those things at the initial um, passage. So this is probably just more expanding on those type of things, more sales and use tax or is it gonna be predominant on, on this tip now more than ever? I guess my, my only concern here is given the, the change of the nature of the project, do, have we readdressed the financials on it given the changes that we're seeing uh, with the, the actual project? Are we still looking at those 17 financials and saying that's what this is going to look like, even though we know that the project is going to be quite a bit different? The, the initial agreement allowed for flexibility on uses. Um, so, yeah, there might have been some changes, but as you know, the TIF amount notes have not increased. Uh, we're looking at um, similar type of uses. Uh, yeah, sometime uh, office space is not gonna be there, but increased sales uh, will be there. So we're confident that the the TIF will perform well as, as with the new uses. Understood. And then um, Mr. Richardson, if you could uh, go into a little bit further detail uh, about the um, the the reasoning you, you just kind of touched on about why the uh, the uh, community benefit agreement that I know the Alderman from the seventeenth had been discussing with Green Street. You said that that cannot go into this bill. Yeah, because the initial conversations uh, were around a contribution to. The St. Louis Public Schools, um, and they are one of the taxing districts. Um, legally, we cannot favor one of the taxing districts over another as it relates to TIF contributions or contributions uh, to a specific um, uh, tax use. So, say for instance, we wanted to give funds for um, trash or refuse or so, so those sort of things, we couldn't allocate dollars and say we're going to take money away from other taxing districts to give it to a specific one through a TIF. That's allowing the developer to make a decision on how we leverage our tax dollars. And that's, that's not what this TIF should be utilized for. Um, again, that's why we're having a conversation separate from this TIF altogether. And again, this is not just based off of this one transaction. Green Street is developing several projects across the city and we have higher level priorities that we want to achieve as a city. One of those is uh, working again with SLDC in the city of how do we bring back some of our vacant and dilapidated schools and having being part of their strategic conversation around educational planning citywide with SLPS. SLDC has been at the table in some of those conversations. And so we're hearing from them that they want to see more schools um, be redeveloped um, taken off of their balance sheet as liabilities, but as assets. And so we're having strategic conversations about how do we do redevelop schools across the city that have been vacant in North St. Louis specifically, right? And so not contributing dollars from a TIF, stirring dollars here to a project or to, to SLPS, 
but how does a developer or our business partners contribute to the overall growth of our city to help with some of those strategic priorities, such as addressing vacancy, addressing our vacant and dilapidated schools um, to create more anchors uh, within these communities. Uh, so that's part of our economic justice action plan, educational justice, expanding educational access. Um, and so these are the conversations that we're having around how do we partner strategically with uh, SLPS to address these things and not look at it again on a transactional basis, but globally, how do we bring businesses and developers to the table to achieve those outcomes? Um, but specifically, we cannot have a contribution uh, from this TIF to public schools. That's just not, we don't have legal grounds for that, and that should not be placed within this board bill. Understood. Um, now, and this this may not be in your uh, in your wheelhouse, and if it's not, I totally understand. Um, so absent putting something like that into the bill, is there anything that would actually bind Green Street to do some of the things that you've discussed, or is that more kind of a, a, a handshake deal? No, so we will have a separate, um, again, agreement between uh, SLDC and Green Street um, to ensure that they are being good partners um, across the city. And if not, we will have rem remedies for that. Um, and I would, I don't know if Mark Spikerman is, is on the call as well, um, or David Sweeney to speak more into that. Um, but Mark, maybe you can give a greater detail on the legals, legalities around it. Yeah, th thank you, Neil. This is Mark Spikerman. I'm uh, outside counsel at SLDC on, on TIF matters and other redevelopment matters. And and, and everything Neil said is, is completely accurate. Uh, it, it can't be in the, the TIF bill, can't be a condition of the TIF. Um, but as we structure sort of overall citywide benefits, there will be various agreements uh, that come into play. And also, uh, as if you're aware of Green Street, you know that they have many projects throughout the city, and uh, you know we 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 don't have short-term memories. If they if they did back out of a an obligation at one point down the road, that would be detrimental to their ability to uh, receive favorable treatment on future incentive applications. Understood. Um, well, I guess with that, I'd, I'd be inclined to. Um, get this out of committee, but I am looking forward to a discussion on the floor with people who are more senior than me and we're here for that uh, 17 vote who may understand the project in a way that I don't. Uh, so thank you for that. And uh, that's all I have, uh, Chairwoman. Uh, I, I can share just a, a brief uh, comment on the uh, understanding about their community benefit. Uh, the school district can also work with them directly. And I think that that is probably the better way because um, that is a great need. And no one can speak for the school district better than they can. So to have Green Street work directly with them uh, uh, and we shall be on the sidelines for any assistance that we could give through SLDC or other entities I think would work out very well. And the school district is very capable of uh, speaking for themselves and guiding uh, developers uh, to the areas in need that are greatest for them. So I think that's a better approach. Agreed, agreed, Audra Woman Davis. Okay. okay. Um, Audra Woman Evans. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I have no questions at this time. It's been very informative and uh, I look forward to seeing the uh, projects in place. All right, thank you very much. Uh, let's go back. Uh, Mr. Connolly, are you ready? Yes, uh, Chairwoman and Davis, I am ready. Okay, go right ahead, sir. Okay, um, I'd like to kind of rewind the clock back to 20, 
late 2016 when the project had its uh, original hearing for the Fifth Commission. And in that project, the, the main concept of the first phase, so RPA1, the old armory building, which does sit, RPA1 is entirely in the 17th ward, the uh, balance of the project is in the 19th, that the essential part of the project was office construction within the shell of the building. And that involved construction on what they refer to as the drill hall, where the soldiers used to do their exercises and so forth. Um, hold on a second. Switch that off. Um, and subsequently in 2017, the developer um, was informed that they weren't able to get historic uh, nomination to the register for the property. And the reason for that was that um, because of the construction on the drill drill hall floor. So basically they said, because of this office construction within the shell, it's ineligible for the credits. So at that point, the developer came back to the LCRA board and the LCRA were basically signing off on the SLU, St. Louis Midtown Redevelopment Corporation's authorization of 15 years of tax abatement for this project. So that tax abatement was predicated in part by the fact that the developer couldn't get the historic credits because of the office construction. So here we are five years later, the office construction aspect is not happening, which to me would seem, well, you could have got the tax credits anyway. Um, so I realize this is convoluted, but it always seems to be the public, um, the taxpayers, the beneficiaries of the taxing districts, the schools, city driven rev general revenue, we're always the last entities, people to see the benefit. It's like the developers are always the first people to see the benefit. So it kind of, although it may have not been intentional on the developer's part, it's still a case of, you know, it's kind of a bait and switch. The equation has changed. And, you know, we all see this pretty graph on TIFFs, you know, showing how, you know, we build this property and the assessed value goes up and that's going to generate a lot of revenue to pay back uh, the TIF notes. Well, the problem in this case, when you have a 15 year tax abatement is that increment is just flattened dramatically, uh, making it very unlikely that the TIF is going to pay off early and just delay the benefit flowing through to the schools. So that's my main contention that, you know, this does need to be revisited with a financial analysis. And I believe it's a substantial change to this RPA pro one project, and it should go back to the TIF commission before coming before this board in the same way that last year, the city foundry project, when it's used, when the project substantially changed to having a residential use, it had to go back to the TIF commission. Um, so those are my main points. And also I'd appreciate in future if, Everyone speaking on behalf of the developer is identified for their roles. And I realize Mr. Sweeney from Lewis Rice, you know, is the counsel for Green Street, but he's also the registered lobbyist. And I think uh, everyone in the room should be aware of that. Thank you. Absolutely. I am registered publicly as I do with all my colleagues, Mr. Connolly. So thanks for pointing I appreciate that out. It. And you can look at the whole list. So right. thank you. I have looked. <laughs> Okay, um, so what we can do in order to clarify for the public, let's everybody introduce themselves and it's with their titles, please. Uh, how about that? Let's start with uh, Mr. Richardson. Would you please have your staff introduce themselves and their titles, please? Yes, so actually yesterday we got new titles as of <laughs> when we rolled oh. out our new business lunch uh, special with the mayor. Um, so I'm currently president executive, uh, CEO, I'm, see, I'm, I'm even messing it up, <laughs> CEO of St. Louis Development Corporation. Uh, so I'll pass it over to Zach Wilson. Uh, Zach Wilson with the SLDC, Vice President of Economic Development Centers. I had to read my name today, thank you. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, you have any other staff with you? Not today. Uh, okay. Mark Spikerman, do you want to, I think he recognized himself earlier, but Mark. 
Yes, I'm, a, I'm an attorney with Gilmore and Bell, and I represent SLDC on TIF matters. And unlike the esteemed Mr. Sweeney, I am not a registered lobbyist. All right. Thank you. Uh, and going back over to the developers team, uh, Mr. Sweeney, you've already introduced yourself and clarified some things. And there were a couple other people there with you. I, I am by myself, but in the Green Street Conference Room, I'll hand it over to James Hefner. Okay. Hi, uh, I'm James Hefner. I'm general counsel and executive vice president at Green Street. Gerard Hollins, director of strategy and development for Green Street. Matt Bauer, development manager for Green Street. Scott Riley, I'm an attorney with Cook and Riley and part of the legal team representing Green Street. Thank you very much. Uh, as we have gone through these developments um, through COVID, uh, it has, many of them have changed. I know I have four developments that are going through uh, uh, their redevelopment process to make sure that the investments and financing and the outcomes are the best not for the city as well as for the developer. You know, when you go and sign on the dotted line for millions and millions of dollars, you for sure are going to make sure that the development is going to profit for the city. And if we do understand nothing else, the city does not pay for developments. Someone else has to go to the bank and sign off on these loans and, and assure that it gets done. So um, we are all partners in this. I appreciate all that come to our cities and do the right thing. Uh, and we've had some that have left because they couldn't have their way and uh, that's okay. But we have some very good partners that are working hard on the city. And I, I am one of those people who understand probably more about the development process than most, but that's okay. I'm still only a legislator and I respect the work of the St. Louis Development Corporation and I respect the work of the Community Development Corporation and I do not get out of my lane. You all have tried to pull me out of it, but I don't come, do I? So let's get um, back to the committee here. Uh, does any committee people have any other questions? And you can just feel free to open your mic and speak. Hearing none, I just saw uh, Alderwoman uh, Tina Peel wants to speak. Please feel free to move forward, ma'am. Alderwoman Peel. Thank you. Um, thank you, Chairwoman uh, Davis and members of the committee for giving me the opportunity to speak. Um, uh, a few comments I would like to make. Uh, the first, I will just start with um, some of the uh, discussion today regarding the city boundary. I would first like to say that um, I am for development. I think development is great. It needs to happen for growth. And at the same time, I feel there needs to be some accountability regarding development. And I want to say that, you know, the Army building is exclusively, the building location is exclusively in the 17th Ward. I had been working on a board bill um, regarding uh, the Armory and this TIF. And uh, we were in the finalization of this board bill regarding an equitable development contribution of $470,000. And also uh, a community impact mitigation agreement or a good neighborhood agreement. And I'll discuss that a little bit um, I'll, I'll discuss that uh, uh, momentarily. Uh, some comments that I would like to make, other comments I'd like to make, are um, 
you know, older persons, uh, many older persons, uh, and the ones on the board are, many of them are not urban planners. However, I am an urban planner. I have a degree, master's from MIT, and have been practicing this for over 15 years. And so I have been able to hold, I believe, the city and SLDC more accountable. And I feel that older people all have niches. They all have expertise in one subject matter or another. We have some older people who um, focus on environment. And so I look to them for their expertise on environment. I mean, one of those older people was former older person Navarro. And so, you know, as an urban planner myself, professionally, one of the things that older people do and what we are supposed to do is legislate. And we can legislate and at the same time, we can hold people and we could hold our city accountable and responsible by understanding the subject matter. And so I have, over the last year and a half, have brought up questions and have questioned different practices in development. And I feel that is something that we all need to do. And that through questioning and asking questions and getting and drilling down to the details of different subject matters, and in this case, it's development, we could better legislate and create legislation that is better for the city. And so that is how we are legislators, is that we can research, we can bring in outside experts to learn, to understand, so that we can make the best decision. And that is what I have done. Because of my background, I have been able to discuss this with SLDC and others in a lot of detail. I've reached out nationally to different organizations that look at tax incentives, like Good Jobs First and Local Progress, and my professors at MIT who have worked on TIF and tax incentive legislation for decades and have created standards and helped cities create standards for development, equitable equitable development, equitable development co contributions. And that's what I would like, and that's what I've been trying to do. I request that we motion to table Board Bill 89 and 90 in order for us to allow SLDC, St. Louis Public Schools, and myself to finalize that $470,000 contribution and the agreement that Green Street had with me and SLDC regarding this community impact mitigation agreement. And what that is, is a good neighbor agreement. And why I'd like to have that part of this bill to hold Green Street accountable is that they have been building in Forest Park Southeast a lot of developments which are great. It will strengthen the 17th Ward and Midtown. However, the residents in Forest Park Southeast who are next to and adjacent to these developments have been bypassed and for better um, words is that they've been bypassed in terms of how the construction development practices are initiated by Green Street. And my constituents 
are complaining vociferously that there's dust, people are parking in their parking spaces, the alleys are closed for over a day, and different things like that are happening in this neighborhood in Forest Park Southeast. And I and the constituents would like to hold this developer more accountable in terms of mitigating the daily inconveniences that these neighborhood neighbors are facing. So these are two things that were being finalized by Green Street, myself, and SLDC and Neil Richardson. And I was not made aware, as I have mentioned just a few days ago, regarding this, these board bills to be sponsored by another other person. And it disappoints me that I have been vote bypassed. It disappoints me that these two things, the equitable development contribution and this community impact mitigation agreement are not part of the board bill. And that the equitable development contribution, which could go to the SLPS schools or something else, Marshall School was uh, discussed, is that we were able to do this with the city foundry. And I was working with Mark Spikerman and other lawyers regarding how do we put and attach an equitable development contribution to a TIF. So it has happened and it could happen. And the city foundry it went back to the Board of Alder because there was a substantial, significant change. It went from two office buildings to an office building, and, um, and now it's gonna be one office building and residential. That was a significant material change and went back to the committee and to the Board of Alder. Some people have, during this hearing, I think Alderman, Alderman Narayan brought up about the material change that has happened in this particular development and have had significant changes. And so I question why if this particular development with significant changes has did not or it's not going back up to the Board of Alder in a similar fashion as the city foundry and our ability in that particular project to put an equitable development contribution attached to the board bill. So thank you for allowing me to speak today. Our work to the developer and SLDC regarding these agreements that were made between the city and our city. Very proud of the city of St. Louis, SLDC, and the mayor. Going forward, in terms of having more developers held accountable to getting direct contributions. And so I thank you and I look forward to working with you with the Armory and Green Street and SLDC. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Alderwoman uh, Peel. Back to the committee members again. Uh, does anybody still have, or is everybody still comfortable? Do you have any additional questions? Uh, I'd like to close on this board bill, uh, 89, with a few comments. Uh, one is it has been um, 
clearly defined by the St. Louis Development Corporation, the um, position of community benefit agreement. Uh, it is illegal to put it in the board bill. We cannot favor any one taxing district for any purposes. Uh, there is also uh, the desire of the St. Louis Public Schools uh, to speak for themselves, which they have indicated to me, the board members, and they are very, very happy at the way, the process that the St. Louis Development Corporation is taking with the developers. And uh, they will make the decisions on their behalf uh, and they are at the table in consideration. If there are any other um, points that should be considered as we move forward in the next few weeks, the St. Louis Development Corporation, the developers uh, and others are always available to answer any questions you may have. As you know, we go through second reading, perfection. We have at least two to three weeks uh, if anybody has any additional concerns. But right now, I believe we're in a very professional place. We have had all the considerations taken and put into this project. And we have brought uh, this, pro this pro process uh, to another level because we have never had the St. Louis Public Schools specifically at the table uh, making decisions on their behalf. And this is good, this is healthy, and I do appreciate that. So um, what I'd like to do is um, ask if our vice president would take over the meeting for right now and uh, call for uh, the vote. I don't think I wanna do that myself, go right ahead. All right, uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, with that, uh, I guess the chair will entertain a motion uh, to pass the board bill. Second. Uh, can we, no, I, I'll, somebody needs to make the motion. Uh, <laughs> I, make, <laughs> I make a motion that we pass, what's the number, I'm sorry. 89. 89, I've moved that we pass board bill 89. With the due pass recommendation? With the due pass, due pass recommendations. I'm sorry. Okay. Second. It's been moved by the alderwoman from the 27th uh, and seconded by the alderwoman from the 4th that we pass Board Bill 89 with a due pass recommendation. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Cohn? Here. Alderman Kotar? Aye. Alderwoman Boyd? Aye. Alderwoman, I'm sorry, Alderman Narayan? Aye. Alderwoman Evans? Aye. Chair Davis? Aye. I have five aye votes, no, no votes. By your vote, you. sustain the motion of the Alderwoman from the 27th uh, to do pass the board bill uh, 89. Uh, Madam Chair, do you want me to keep going or do you want, to, do you want to take the reins back? I'd like for you to keep going, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, next on the agenda, make sure I've got my agenda here. Hold on a second. Okay, here it is. Uh, next on the agenda is Board Bill 90, uh, also by Alderwoman, or by Chairwoman Davis. Uh, Chairwoman, uh, you're recognized on Board Bill 90. Okay. Uh, oh, this thing is acting great. Thank you very much. Uh, board Bill 90 has been alluded to a little bit as we were talking about Board Bill 89. What I'd like to do is ask uh, uh, direct, or rather President uh, Richardson of SLDC to please uh, open us up on Board Bill 90. For sure. So I'll pass it over to um, uh, Mr. Zach Wilson, Vice President of Economic Development and Centers for SLDC to give a quick um, introduction of the Board Bill itself. Uh, then pass it over to uh, Mark Spikerman. I know he has a couple comments on this board bill and also other matters regarding uh, previous comments and then move over to Green Street for any final um, comments. So I'll pass it over to Zach. I apologize. Um, I believe this one, board bill 90 is the tip notes, which we usually see on um, 
the first one we just heard to, uh, discussed was about uh, amending certain parts of the agreement to uh, extend out um, deadlines and uh, scope of the when the construction will be completed within the, those matters. So this board bill's 90 is for the TIF notes. Uh, Mark Sparkman uh, can go over further detail if you have one. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Zach. And um, and it was alluded to by Mr. Sweeney at the beginning of the meeting, the, uh, the TIF note board bill, similar to other TIF notes issued by the city, it takes TIF revenues, and in this case, CID revenues as well, pledges them to the repayment of, of uh, TIF notes uh, that would be available to reimburse the developer for certain costs. Uh, earlier, Alderwoman Peel brought up uh, the Foundry project, and just, just for a few points of clarification there, there's a lot of differences between this project and the Foundry project. Uh, the Foundry involved uh, RPA2, a separate redevelopment project. Uh, the scope of that RPA2 project uh, was changed substantially uh, from what was in the original redevelopment plan. It was introducing a whole new residential use. Under the TIF Act, that triggers uh, getting the whole TIF kicked back to the TIF Commission. In this case, uh, the existing TIF redevelopment plan, the existing TIF redevelopment agreement provide flexibility for various commercial uses. Uh, we're still within that sort of scope, even as the project has evolved. Uh, the other item is, um, while we were successful in the foundry negotiating a, uh, an equitable development contribution, there were other incentives going into that bill or into that project. So when you look at the TIF bill versus uh, what we call the chapter 100 bill, you'll find that the equitable development contribution is in the chapter 100 bill, not the TIF bill. Um, every, every incentive program has different statutory rules. We follow them very closely. And that's just the your distinguishing factor in the Foundry Board bills. Thank you. We'll pass it over to uh, David Sweeney and then the Green Street team, please. Sure, uh, David Sweeney. Um, really, it, we're just here to, you guys have covered it well. Um, if there's any specific questions, we're, as always, here to answer any and all questions you may have. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Sweeney. Um, I guess we'll go through members of the committee and see if they've got questions. Mm, I'll start with Alderman Cohn as he joined us. No, uh, Alderwoman Boyd. Uh, no questions. Thank you. Alderman Narayan. No questions. Thank you. Alderwoman Evans. No questions. Thank you. All right. Um, Chairwoman Davis, any questions on your bill? Can't hear you. You're on mute. Oh, Alderwoman, you're muted. There you go. Okay. I think I got it now. You got um, it. Okay. So um, I just want to give a couple of more clarifications. I don't um, have any questions. I'm extremely knowledgeable of the bill. Uh, we've been working on this project for a very long time. Yeah, and yes, the actual armory building is in the 17th Ward, but uh, there's other land and uh, that is in the 19th Ward. And so that's why we say that this project, we're talking about a project in its totality. And so that also includes the 19th Ward. Uh, we also know that many developers are really trying to hang in there with the city right now. They've been through a lot through COVID, trying to hold on to make these developments happen. And remember, they're still spending money. They're, they're trying to keep staff on board and make these uh, projects a reality. So we will see other changes and, and or you'll see projects come before you that they've been working on for three, four years, maybe five on some of them. So um, I just wanna say thank you again. And uh, with that, sir, I close. Thank you, Chairwoman. There is um, one public speaker. I just, sorry, glanced at the list. Mr. Conley uh, also signed up relating to Board Bill 90. Mr. Conley. 
forward, Bill. Uh, hearing nothing, I don't even see if he's still on. So hearing nothing from Jerry Connolly, um, Alderwoman, oh, here he comes. Jerry Connolly, anything else on board Bill 90? Uh, yeah, let me see. I'm just trying to pull it up here. Um, I mean, my main thing with Bull Bill 90, I mean, it's just kind of back to the developer control SIDS again. You know, it's now three years since uh, Missouri State Auditor Galloway made recommendations on how the city should um, better scrutinize the establishment of districts. I know this district's already established. I have had some correspondence uh, with Green Street's council, Mr. Riley, regarding um, the various districts that he, had, I guess, provides support to on behalf of the company. And I have yet to see uh, a meeting uh, posted on the city's website for the Armory Said. And, you know, it, it is a local political subdivision. It's a government body. They should be conducting their operations in compliance mm -hmm. uh, with sunshine statutes. Um, and also just reading the summary of the bill, um, you know, we're performing legislation here that's retroactively extending a deadline um, that has since passed, um, which I just think is kind of strange. So anyway, that's all I have. Um, I would really like to see all the taxing districts post their meetings on the city's website in appropriate notice time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Connolly. Uh, with that, uh, Chairwoman Davis, you are recognized to close on board Bill 90. Thank you very much. Um, just to bring, bring clarity again, uh, our SIDS are not required to post on a city website. Uh, you probably won't find one that post their meetings. Uh, all the SIDS that I know in the immediate area, um, they go out of their way to announce their meetings to the neighborhood associations, to um, they have a list of businesses uh, that uh, get the notices. Most of them have um, standard meeting times and dates and they don't even change them. They've been the same for years. Uh, so, um, Everything is up for consideration. It's not something that could not be done in the future, but that has nothing to do with this particular project and they have done nothing wrong as far as operating a SID. Uh, so with that, I would like to ask uh, uh, for consideration of this bill to move forward. And I thank everyone for their time today and most especially uh, for having um, more information put out to the public. Thank you. Thank you, Chairwoman. Uh, the chair will entertain a motion uh, for a due pass recommendation on board bill 90. I make a motion for a due pass recommendation for board bill 90. Second. It's been moved by the alderwoman from the 27th, seconded by the alderwoman from the 4th that we- Previous roll. Board Bill 90 with a due pass recommendation. There's been a request for previous roll. Hearing no objection to previous roll, uh, Board Bill 90's adopt the due pass recommendation. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Thank you, Chairwoman. Um, Chairwoman, do you want to take back over? You want me to just wrap us up here? You can wrap us up, sir. Okay, going through our agenda, we've covered our two board bills. Uh, we have no resolutions for review. Um, I don't see anything listed under committee discussion. Any announcements uh, from members of the committee? I have, I have, I don't have an announcement. I just have a statement because first I wanna thank SLDC for uh, looking at how we're doing business and trying to ensure that we are fair across the board. And with the uh, atmosphere that we have in our political arena, they have been very cautious 
and careful to make sure that all our I's are dotted and T's are crossed. As Alder Woman Davis stated earlier, she made it clear that it's not us, it's older people's responsibility to micromanage SLDC. That's not our role. Our role is to pass legislation and that's, that's the role that we have. We can't dictate one way or the other. In regards to St. Louis Public Schools, they have their own board and they're handling their business very well. So we should not be in their business as kids on the street say in their lane trying to take care of their business we have enough with our own issues within our city so i want to thank neil richardson and his staff and thank uh the committee that's trying to work with them because this is new to all of us the change that we're dealing with in regards to doing business and so uh we appreciate you all for trying to help us through this maze that we're in. And that's what it is, it's a maze. And so we're learning as we go. And I tell everybody that sits on this committee, you learn every time you sit at a HUDS meeting. So don't think you learned it all, trust me. Every day is something new that you had to learn. So I thank uh, Autumn and Coulter and Autumn and Davis because you all have the knowledge just passing it on to us, which helping us. I still look at myself as a newbie, just trying to learn this whole HUD's piece. So thank you all very much. And thank you, SLDC. Thank you, Alder Woman. I, I, my brief announcement would just be to uh, thank Director Richardson and Zach Wilson and the whole SLDC staff for their hard work on bringing the, uh, the mayor's luncheon back yesterday. That was, it was really a great event. Great to see everybody and to celebrate uh, some of our successful businesses and successful development projects, many of which have come through this very committee in, in, in years past. So it was really a lot of fun to see everybody. So I know that thing's a lot of work. Thank you all very much for your efforts there. Um, with that, looking at our agenda, uh, we'll excuse the alderman from the 25th for necessary absence. Uh, and now the Housing, Urban Development, and Zoning Committee meeting for September 29th, 2022 is adjourned. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.